Hola amigos de La Pulga de Las Vegas, ¿cómo están? Y bueno, el día de hoy amigos estuvimos en un gran evento que fue eh, reunido por uh, los inmigrantes aquí, Casa de Inmigrantes en Las Vegas y también de Unidos U.S. Um, Political Fund que tiene, pero tenemos a un, básicamente a un gran, gran, vamos a decir un campeón para nuestra gente latina con nosotros para que les explique realmente de qué se trata la reunión del día de hoy, amigos, para que ustedes estén al pendiente y siempre sepan lo que está pasando. Tenemos a Moisés Tenes, que es parte del Senate. Entonces, Moisés, ¿cómo está el día de hoy? Oh, estoy muy bien, gracias. Muchas gracias por esta entrevista. Nos encantaría muchísimo que nos contara simplemente en términos simples qué es lo que por lo que estamos peleando, por qué se están orga, uh, organizando varias organizaciones para poder ayudar para que se salga y se le pida a sus representantes eh, um, que tienen en sus estados que realmente estén apoyando eh, básicamente el CARES Act, que hay ciertas cosas allí que son muy importantes para nuestra gente latina. Sí, bueno, el, es, estamos hablando de un, un acto que el Congreso ha hecho, una propuesta uh, que tiene, bueno, hoy estamos específicamente hablando de tres partes de ese acto. Um, primero, eh, el cuidado para, para niños, cuidado de, de personas de, de tercera edad y también um, del, uh, de poder tener tiempo o vacaciones para poder cuidar a su familia. Así que eso son, un, es, son uh, muy importantes parte de ese acto que estamos diciendo que necesitamos apoyar y que no lo quiten. Uh, y tenemos que comunicar con, con nuestra comunidad, tiene que comunicarse con el Congreso para decirle que se quede um, estos, estos parte del acto. Amigos, y como sabemos que los hispanos fuimos los que más, más, más hemos sufrido durante esta pandemia, es tan importante que dejemos que nuestra voz se escuche, como dice a nuestro amigo Moisés, dejando que todo eh, sepan nuestros representantes en el estado que estemos. Aquí en Nevada, pues tenemos, yo puedo decir que estamos muy afortunados porque tenemos muy buena representación, pero igual es dejarles saber que estamos aquí, que queremos que estas cosas sean parte de este uh, paquete, que no queremos que nuestro, nuestros ancianos sufran y que también nuestras familias no tengan el apoyo para el cuidado de, de, de sus hijos. Y bueno, es importante que ustedes lo entiendan, amigos, si tienen preguntas, pongan en este video, en el área de comentarios, para que nosotros podamos hacerles llegar eh, la información directa o de las organizaciones que realmente están eh, al tanto de todo lo que está pasando para el beneficio la, de nuestra comunidad hispana, ¿verdad? Muchísimas gracias el día de hoy por estar con nosotros, Moisés, y gracias por explicarlo para que todos estemos muy al tanto de lo que está pasando. ¿Algo que quiera decir antes de terminar? Bueno, tanto es tan importante, cuando hablamos de estas cosas importantes para nuestra comunidad, nosotros tenemos que junto luchar para estas cosas, um, si no, no podemos quejarnos después porque no pasaron, si no, tenemos que juntarnos y juntos como comunidad realmente vamos a tener éxito. Amigos, es importante, yo pienso mencionar al referente a eso, es que si ustedes no necesitan apoyo para, para vamos a decir, child care, porque ustedes están en una posición que tal vez no lo necesiten, es muy importante import eh, recordar que nuestra gente hispana, nuestra comunidad, sí lo está necesitando. Entonces, necesitamos estar unidos con ellos para que realmente ellos puedan eh, recibir el apoyo que se necesita durante, esta, bueno, durante este periodo que hemos vivido. Entonces, no nomás porque ustedes no lo necesitan, no significa que su primo, su vecino, el compañero de trabajo no lo esté necesitando, así que nosotros a veces tenemos que ser la voz para las otras personas que no tienen la habilidad de poder ir a buscar ¿no? ese apoyo. Así que muchas gracias nuevamente a Moy, muchísimas gracias a la comunidad de La Pulga, los queremos muchísimo, saben que siempre estamos aquí para traerles lo último que está pasando con nuestra gente latina en Las Vegas y realmente estamos buscando eh, traerles información a nivel nacional de todo lo que está afectando a nuestra comunidad. Muchísimas gracias a todos, que tengan un un excelente día. Gracias. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. My name is Andres Ramirez. Mi nombre es Andres Ramirez. And we are here today at the Immigrant Home Foundation here in Las Vegas, um, where we're partnering with Unidos U.S. Action Fund to talk about various provisions within the Reconciliation Act, which we refer to as the care economy, that are vitally important to Nevada families, and in particular to Latino families in Nevada. Today we will be joined by a variety of speakers who will be talking about why these initiatives are so important and why we as Nevadans need to encourage our representatives in Congress to continue to ensure that they stay within the final package and that they get passed so that Nevada families will get the benefit and relief that they need provided under these provisions. Joining us today, our first speaker is Luz Marina Mosquera, 
who is the founder and executive director of the Immigrant Home Foundation. Luz, thank you for joining us. Buenas tardes, gracias Andrés. Um, mi nombre es Rosalina Mosquera, directora aquí de la Fundación Casa del Inmigrante. A bienvenidos a la Casa del Inmigrante. Welcome to the Immigrant Home Foundation, Fundación Casa del Inmigrante. We are a non-profit organization accredited, uh, recognized by the Department of Justice. Somos una organización no lucrativa, acreditada bajo el Departamento de Justicia, reconocida para hacer algunos servicios de inmigración. Uh, our mission has been always to serve the immigrant community of Southern Nevada. Um, and now uh, I would like to welcome to Rafael Collazo, Executive Director of the uh, Unidos USA Action Fund and Senator Moises Dennis. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos a su casa, la casa de la Fundación Casa del Inmigrante. Now I would like to introduce our Director of External Affairs, Ruben Kiwen. Ahora les quiero uh, presentar a nuestro Director de Asuntos Externos, Ruben Kiwen, quien va a hablar un poquito más sobre el tema. Gracias. Gracias, Luz Marina. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Ruben Kiwen. I am the Director of External Affairs at the Immigrant Home Foundation. Uh, mi nombre es Ruben Kiwen. Soy el Director de Asuntos Externos en la Casa del Inmigrante. Uh, primero todo, bienvenidos uh, al Senador Moisés Dennis, uh, también a Rafael Collazo de Unidos US, Andrés Ramírez igualmente, y muchas gracias a nuestra Directora Ejecutiva. Uh, as my executive director mentioned, we are a nonprofit that is dedicated to helping the immigrant community. Uh, we do citizenship, we do DACA applications, uh, we help victims of domestic violence apply for U visas. Uh, and up until last year, when the pandemic began, the Immigrant Home Foundation stepped up to help uh, the most in need in our community. Uh, we offered vaccines out of this center. We also offered assistance uh, for people who were in need of food. We also offered rental assistance and eviction prevention. So we have been in the forefront of the needs in our community. Uh, and that is the reason why we feel that uh, this uh, reconciliation package must, must keep uh, these provisions with home care, with child care, and also with paid leave. We see firsthand here at the Immigrant Home Foundation the families who are being impacted by potentially uh, passing this reconciliation package with these provisions. Uh, we see firsthand families who are struggling to make ends meet, who desperately need childcare, affordable childcare, if not free childcare. Uh, we also see a lot of seniors who are in desperate need of home care. We see families that are low income who cannot afford to bring a home care professional to their home. We need to make it affordable uh, for every single family regardless of your economic status. And same thing with paid leave. Uh, we see some of the hardest working people in Nevada here at our offices. These are people who desperately need paid leave so they can spend time with their family, so they can be able to have a, a, uh, a life with dignity uh, and a life with their family. Uh, nuevamente, Rubén Kiwan con Casa del Inmigrante, y estamos muy agradecidos con Unidos US por eh, colaborar aquí con Casa del Inmigrante para resaltar estos temas tan importantes, este paquete re de reconciliación que ahorita actualmente se está llevando a cabo en el Congreso de los Estados Unidos, tiene que tener tiene que mantener estas provisiones del cuidado para las personas de tercera edad, eh, cuidado para nuestros niños y también eh, pago eh, de, de tiempo uh, de vacaciones para las personas que necesitan tomar días uh, eh, para cuidar a sus familias o para tomar uh, uh, días de descanso. Así que es muy importante, aquí en la Casa del Migrante vemos a familias que serían beneficiadas de estas provisiones que están en, la, uh, en el paquete de reconciliación del Congreso. Así que nosotros tenemos que apoyar a nuestros hijos, tenemos que apoyar a las personas de tercera edad y también tenemos que apoyar a la gente trabajadora 
que mantiene nuestra economía fuerte. Así que por esas razones estamos agradecidos con el senador Dennis, con Rafael Collazo de Unidos uh, y también con todos los esfuerzos que se están llevando a cabo en el Congreso de los Estados Unidos para mantener estas provisiones en el paquete de reconciliación. Y ahora tengo el honor, now I have the honor to uh, introduce uh, somebody who has been at the forefront of this fight, somebody who has been organizing our community all throughout the country, uh, and we're very honored and privileged to have him here in Las Vegas uh, to talk about the provisions and what, what else we could be doing as a community. And we have the Executive Director of Unidos U.S. Action Fund, Rafael Collazo, who's going to give us a little bit more details. Quiero presentar con nosotros, tenemos uh, el honor de tener a el Director Ejecutivo de Unidos U.S. Uh, Action Fund, quien ha estado organizando a nuestra comunidad en, todas las, en todo el país para asegurarnos de que estas provisiones sean incluidas en el paquete del Congreso. Así que, uh, sin, uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce a Rafael Collazo. I mean, gracias. Thank you so much, uh, Ruben, for that very warm introduction. Uh, a special shout out and uh, special thank you uh, for Luz Marina and Ruben and their team here at, uh, uh, at the Immigrant Foundation. Uh, Community Foundation for their war warm uh, hosting us for today for this very important conversation. Um, also want to be very thankful for State Senator Mo Dennis who will be sharing his words in a moment and a great friend and advocate Andres Jimenez, uh, Ramirez who organized today's activities. It is an honor for me as the executive, uh, my name is Rafael Collazo, I'm the executive director of the Unidos U.S. Action Fund which is the um, advocacy arm of our parent organization Unidos U.S the nation's largest Hispanic civil rights organization. Uh, mi nombre es Rafael Collazo, yo soy el director executivo de Unidos U.S. Action Fund, um, que es la alma política para la organización hermana Unidos U.S. Um, it is critically important, uh, this moment in our history, what's happening in Washington, and the impact it will have on the Latino community for generations to come. We all are very aware, keenly aware, of the impact uh, and the challenges that have been faced during this COVID 19 uh, error in this pandemic that has particularly hit our families and our family's health and e economy over the last few years. We are now in a moment where we can work together to not only provide the necessary economic and health resources available to our community to, to, us, to uh, relieve ourselves from this pandemic, but even more keenly to examine what have been the core issues that have held back many Latino working families, um, even pre-COVID pandemic, as it related to healthcare access, um, having access to child care, home care, elder care, and, and, and elements like paid family medical leave so that we had the financial resources to not only provide, put food on the table for our families, but to take care of them. And there's no greater resource in the Latino community than our loved ones, our parents, our grandparents, nuestros abuelos, nuestros niños, y nuestras familias. And so over the last several weeks, we've seen in, in Washington that uh, the Democrats in Congress and uh, through the leadership of the White House um, passed a 3.5 billion budget resolution um, to begin the conversation and open up the possibility for this historic infrastructure bill to pass. But now we know the fight just now begins. Within that package, we, had historic, we have historic investments that would be potentially game-changing investments uh, for resources that would impact the Latino community as it relates to the areas of paid family medical leave, uh, child care, home care, elder care for our loved ones, to give us the resources to not have us make the choice between providing food on our table or taking care of our loved ones in their most dire time. We know especially how these issues impact the Latinas in our community. Even if it, even just if we passed the paid family medical leave provisions um, in this, in the human infrastructure bill that's currently being, uh, that's, go that's currently being debated in Congress, that would assist 27 and a half million Latino families and hundreds of thousands of them, if not over a million of those families, live here in the great state of Nevada. Um, but the work is not done. We're gonna see a lot of attempts from, uh, from Republicans in Congress and, and even attempts and efforts being made to try to dissuade some Democrats in the House and Senate and, uh, and even in the administration to tone down or try to minimize these investments 
in our community, and we, we're standing here as a group of Latino leaders, not only in Nevada, which is a critical uh, state for our country, but also uh, leadership that extends beyond these state borders nationwide to say, it is time to make these historic investments in our Latino families, to support our caregivers, to support our seniors, to support our children that deserve quality childcare, that deserve to be, be provided the educational foundation in, in early child uh, pre-K programs um, to be ready for their K through 12 experience in education. We are the future of the workforce. We are the, the, the current uh, student population in this country and we need the resources to provide our children, our families, the resource that they need to, to, to take care of themselves and, and, and move up the economic ladder. It is so critically important that we call on all of our federal members of, uh, in Congress, including the delegation in Nevada, our senators and members of Congress to support all of these provisions uh, and make the historic investments that we need right now. And we call on the administration, President Biden, the White House and the administration to finish the job, you know, to finish the job and get the full package passed so we can have paid family medical leave uh, and the resource that we need to take care of our loved ones that are ill um, at home where they have a, a, a stable foundation, a loving uh, home to, to be support and be around their, their loved ones um, during this time of need and of course the children in our lives that deserve the child care so that not only mommy and daddy can go for uh, work and provide for their families but they can have the education foundation to thrive in the K through 12 and beyond settings. Um, to share why this is important not only for Nevadans but for uh, why this is so personal, I'm honored to introduce a great champion for the Latino community, not only in this great state, but throughout the country. Uh, one of our great elected officials here, State Senator Mo Dennis. Thank you. It's, um, it's great to be with you today. I'm Senator uh, Mo Dennis Moises. Soy Senador Estatal Moises Dennis, um, Distrito Número Dos. Um, we are, when we think of the, our community, the Latino community, um, really the most important thing for us is family. And today we're here to talk about a provision that's been put in by Congress in this Reconciliation Act um, that is, is, is perhaps one of the most important things that, that we are able to do for our families um, in that being child care, elder care, and paid leave. Um, as we take care of our, our families, um, whether it be um, our children, um, or our, our aging parents um, and grandparents, it's so important that we have the ability to do that. And these provisions need to be left in um, and we need to communicate with Congress um, and our representatives in Congress um, how important these provisions are and that, that we leave these provisions there. Um, para nosotros, las familias realmente son la más importante cosa. Y eso, esto es algo histórico que necesitamos hacer para ayudar a nuestras familias. So as we, as we move forward, we need to work together as a community um, to make sure that we leave these provisions there um, so that we can provide the care um, that we need for our families. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Again, my name is Andres Ramirez, and I want to thank the Immigrant Home Foundation. I want to thank Unidos U.S. Action Fund, uh, State Senator Moises Dennis, um, Desde Nevada, who's here, La Pulga here for covering and making sure that we educate our community about these important issues. Um, both the Immigrant Home Foundation and Unidos U.S. Action Fund are committed and dedicated to ensuring that they can conduct these educational forums for our community so that they are informed about the issues that matter to us and they understand what are the calls to action that need to happen so they can ensure that we are advocating effectively with our members of Congress. So please stay tuned to uh, additional information as it comes out. This will be the first of many yet to come and we encourage everybody to stay involved, stay engaged, and again to contact their members to talk to them about the importance of these provisions. Thank you very much. Gracias, Andres. Just algunos pocos palabras más para un poco más información. Just kind of put context of where we're ha this debate is happening. Um, the Speaker Pelosi, so that both uh, the both bills, uh, the the infrastructure bill and the human infrastructure bill, um, 
there's a bit of a deadline. Speaker Pelosi has given the moderates in, in the House of Representatives a deadline of September 27th, so that um, she's agreed that, you know, at the very least, the infrastructure bill, the standard infrastructure bill, will move forward by September 27th. So they, we really, this is a very critical month um, for both um, both packages, including the human infrastructure bill, which would have a tremendous impact on the Latino community, Latino families to. Uh, to move their, their, these processes and ultimately for them to be passed by both the House and Senate in the month of September. So, sumamente importante, durante el mes de septiembre, en la próxima semana, va a empezar el mes de gerencia hispana, ¿verdad? Uh, para nosotros oír nuestras voces y para comunicar con los miembros del Congreso, uh, llamadas, uh, correo electrónico, eh, las plataformas digitales, las redes sociales, para subir sus voces, para... para explicar por qué la importancia de, de, de la economía de cuidar sus familias, ¿verdad? Hashtag care can't wait, because care can't wait. So this is an issue that podemos hablar décadas de la importancia de nuestras familias hispanas, pero ahora mismo tenemos la oportunidad en los próximos dos, tres semanas to have our voice heard and, and get historic investments in child care, paid family medical leave, and uh, home care, which, again, cada familia que hablamos de, uh, durante esta campaña te, tienen un, una cuenta. They have a personal story how they take care of, ten, tienen tres generaciones viviendo en su familia, en, en su hogar. You know, they took care of their, their mother. They're taking care of a disabled child. They're, they're struggling with these issues. It's a very personal issue for our community, and it's, it's happening right now. We have an opportunity to get historic investments in these issues passed, which would have, gener would, would impact generations of Latinos and and uh, literally all of our communities. And finally, I just wanted to add that uh, we are very, um, very cognizant of how these issues impact not only the Latino community broadly, but also the immigrant Latino population. So we are working very hard at Unidos US Action Fund to fight so that mixed status families and that immigrant inclusion is included in as many of these provisions as possible. Uh, we had a forum uh, that we worked with Andres Ramirez and other Latino leaders in Nevada last week related to the child tax credits. and. Uh, that's another uh, pillar of our Unidos U.S. Action Fund policy priorities in these, uh, in these infrastructure bill packages to provide more resources to our immigrant children. Um, so this is not only a Latino issue, but it's also very important as it relates to the Latino immigrant population. Y quiero dar las gracias, especialmente a la prensa hispana, para comunicar la importancia de los temas que está pasando en Washington, D.C., los efectos in, uh, in la población inmigrante aquí en Nevada. Mil gracias.